What's going on you guys? Pep Platypus here and it's time to talk about episode 22 of Dragon Ball Super. Once again we're seeing a lot of differences when compared to the movie and I kind of like it. I do kind of miss, uh, I mean maybe we can still get it because they're still soldiers but you know I kind of miss everyone breaking off and kind of fighting their own group separately and using their own unique moves but you know whatever. Um, we get Tagama who's been training with Frieza and he's been getting beat to death or near death and he's extremely durable because of it. He's, you know, adapted to Frieza's abilities and techniques to where he's not, I don't know how physically, like, powerful he is, like, energy-wise, but he is at least durable enough to take on their attacks. So he fights Piccolo a little bit. Really cool moment where he catches Piccolo by the arm, tears it off, lands a few blows, and knocks Piccolo back, and then Piccolo has to regen his arm. That was a great moment. Uh, I don't know if Takuma should be this powerful. We don't really... I, he was like, what, like Zarbon Dodoria level before, and now he's really, really powerful, still nowhere near Frieza. So, you know, there's maybe some power scaling issues here and there, but it's not as bad as it was in the movie with the fucking devil-looking dude doing the shit he did to Piccolo. So, yeah, and Takuma's uh, reign of terror is short-lived because Ginyu Frog shows up writes down change in the sand, and uh, they switch bodies. Now, Ginyu in Tagama's body is cool. I like that Ginyu's back. It's interesting. I like that they... I like that this episode incorporated a lot of old footage with the flashbacks. It really makes it feel like it is a direct sequel to Dragon Ball, and yeah, that was all great. Maybe a touch too much footage was used, but still, I thought they did a good job. And, you know, Ginyu, though, I do kind of have a problem, because Ginyu, yeah, he's flamboyant and he poses and stuff, but... I don't remember Captain Ginyu being this flamboyant. Maybe I'm wrong. I know he did poses with the group and everything, but I remember him being a little bit more badass than this. Uh, he's very much, you know, like, talking flamboyantly and, like, hugging himself and shit, and it's just, I don't remember him doing things like that. So, I don't know, maybe he's a touch out of character, but it's not, you know, terrible or anything. He's not, like, completely different. And he's able to pull out a little bit more power from Tagama's body, which... I would say contradicts what happens with Goku in the Namek arc, but, you know, it is possible that with Goku's body there was a compatibility issue, and with Togama there's a good synchronization, so that's always possible. He goes in there and starts punking everybody, but not really. I mean, he knocks around, you know, Tien and, you know, Krillin and everything. That's obvious, but once Gohan steps in, he goes Super Saiyan. Gohan takes him out in, like, two hits, puts him on the dirt, so... That was awesome. He didn't, like, kill him or anything. He gave him the, you know, get the fuck out of here treatment, which I really, I got a big smile on my face when Frieza saw that shit and got mad and remembered Goku and they cut to the old footage. That was badass. And, uh, yeah, Gotenks was a letdown. Um, they'll probably refuse, but, like, idiots, they fused, like, on the way there, and it took too long and they unfroze after hitting Tagama once, so... And it was funny how he's like, oh, I'm super durable, and then he takes a nut shot, and he's like, oh, fuck, I'm down, like, fuck, I can't handle that shit, so that was hilarious. Um, so they fit in some comedy, I liked the use of old footage, it was just a really well done episode. The animation overall was pretty solid, it wasn't like anything amazing, but the artwork and everything was fairly consistent throughout the episode. And uh, the pacing was pretty solid, so... I guess the last thing I should mention is probably what happens with Piccolo and then the preview for the next episode. So, I don't know why I find myself talking about the preview for the next episode on Dragon Ball Super a lot, but whatever. Piccolo ends up jumping in front of Gohan. He takes the hit for him uh, because he basically freezes like, alright, this guy's a Super Saiyan now. He's reminding me of his dad. Fuck that shit. And he starts blasting Gohan. And after a while, you're kind of like, okay, yeah, Gohan probably can't dodge. He's got both legs shot, he's got an arm shot, his chest's been shot a couple times. But before that, he probably could have dodged. Make your Team 4-star references. But, yeah, what ends up happening is Piccolo ends up jumping in front of the final blast, takes the hit and goes down. Is Gohan going to freak out, land a couple hits on Frieza? Is he going to take out Tagama? I'm not sure. In the preview, it doesn't look like he does anything, but they could just be keeping it under wraps and kind of hiding those scenes. But Goku and Vegeta are going to show up in the next episode, which is definitely interesting. And also, go I forgot, yeah, Goku and Vegeta go to what is kind of like a spirit of room and time, the hyperbolic time chamber. And uh, basically they can only move in it if they suppress their key within their body. And yeah, and it is like a hyperbolic time chamber. It's a very similar room. 
So that's interesting. A lot of people predicted that. And Whis, um I don't think he said it in this arc yet, but in the movie at this point he would have already said that he has time manipulation abilities. He, you know, he can do things with time. So it kind of makes sense that he would be able to take them to this realm. Uh, maybe needs a bit more explaining, but, I mean, it's not like... You know, it could use a bit more explaining, but it's kind of okay on its own. Uh, so, yeah, they're probably going to train there. I'm not sure how long, what the time difference will be. They show up in the next episode. They're probably going to have their Super Saiyan God abilities. Uh, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan abilities. Super Saiyan Blue, whatever. So, yeah, I can't wait to see that. Hopefully the fight's, you know, well animated between Goku and uh, uh, Frieza. But that doesn't seem like that's going to start in the next episode, though. I doubt it. We're probably going to get... A little bit more of uh, the group fighting the army. Maybe not the army itself, but at least Gohan's probably going to do something after what happened with Piccolo, but we'll have to see. The sacrifice moment was nice. It looked good. Um, again, Gohan could have probably dodged after getting shot a couple times. Um, but after a while, yeah, he was probably in too much pain to dodge, so... Yeah, with that, that's like a minor thing, though. And like I said, the power level with Tagama might be a little bit weird, because he'd be... At that point, Piccolo would be, like, uh, he's around Android 17 strength, right? They were pretty much even with each other. So, I'm thinking that, yeah, I don't think, like, Togma would have to get a really big boost to be able to compete with that. But that, at least that's still not, like, Majin Buu level. That's not, like, crazy, crazy strong. So, whatever. You guys can tell me about that in the comment section below what your guys' thoughts are on the power scaling. But, anyways, I guess that means I can wrap this thing up. Thanks for watching this video. Tell me what you guys thought of this episode of Dragon Ball Super in the comment section below. Again, you can tell me about what you think about the whole power scaling thing. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. I post things there sometimes. Give this video a thumbs up. That would help me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already or if you like what you've seen here. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.